Hey, what's up, VC? It's Steve again, and it's time for another hard rock and heavy metal update. Um, a lot of this stuff that I'm about to show is still stuff going back to December that I uh, picked up over the holidays. Um, a couple were gifts. Uh, some of this is stuff that uh, I picked up from members of the VC uh, that were selling stuff. So it's just kind of a hodgepodge. Uh, first in the background, uh, we're listening to Armored Saint, not to the old school. Uh, this had a number of new songs on it. It also had their original three-song EP, but it had the full version, which was four songs. Um, I actually bought this for that. Um, while I do like the, the later Armored Saint, I, I, I prefer the stuff from that uh, their EP and their first two albums. Um, the stuff they did later on into the late 80s, uh, 90s, and then this is from 2001. Um, I, I just don't like it as much as their early 80s stuff, but still... Um, still a really good album, a uh, double album as a matter of fact. It's also got uh, some uh, B-sides and stuff off of soundtracks, a couple of demo tapes, uh, demo tracks from 89. Um, and then I've never seen the videos. There's actually a couple of live videos on here too from uh, I believe 2001 as well that I just never listened to. But uh, um, really the jewel of this is those... Uh, that additional song from the uh, three song EP that they put out in 83 so definitely worth having in your collection and I think my problem is um, this time frame and, and the stuff that they were doing in the in the 90s uh, the vocals were more screamed vocals whereas uh, the vocals were more sang in the, the, the early days I just prefer the earlier sound um, and so before we get started, I just want to show something I picked up today. This was, uh, I stopped by a shop real quick. Uh, uh, every Friday, I take my daughter out to get uh, burgers at this uh, gourmet burger shop. That's just kind of a, a daddy-daughter thing that we do. Um, she didn't want burgers yesterday, so we went today instead. Today's Saturday. And right across the street is a CD warehouse that I step into sometimes. They don't, they don't usually have uh, uh, much that's very good. I, I, you know, I... Maybe once every two or three months, I find something decent there. Um, today, I was shocked uh, with what I ran across. So, um, the first thing I picked up was radio promo. Song remains the same. The jacket's probably VG. Uh, maybe VG plus condition. The records are mint, though. The records are beautiful. Uh, and if, I don't know if you can see that, but I paid $11.99 for it. So I thought that was a, a pretty killer find. Uh, and this was one of the Zeppelins that I was missing, so that just made it that much better. And this one blew me away as well, because I've wanted this. Um... <clears throat> Mainly because uh, albums C and D, um, well, actually, it's kind of mixed throughout. Uh, so my favorite era of, or my favorite Ozzy is No More Tears. Um, I can never find a good copy on vinyl. Um, I've been looking for quite a while, and when I do find them, it's pretty trash. So I was pretty happy when they announced that they were releasing Memoirs of a Madman because it covered a, a few of the songs off of that. Um, it also had Perry Mason, which was a song I, I dug off of, uh, I think it was Down to Earth that that was on. Uh, and a couple other tracks that are kind of hard to find on, on, on vinyl. So, Plus, obviously, the hits, Over the Mountain, Mr. Crowley, Crazy Train, stuff like that. Um, Ultimate Sin. Um, so I was really stoked when I heard this was coming out. And then I saw the price. Everybody wanted like 35 to 40 bucks on it, which I thought, I just think is too much for a double album. Well, they also had this. I don't know if you can see that price, $18.99. So I grabbed that as well. I actually got, grabbed both of these albums for what you would generally pay for this by itself. So I was uh, pretty amazed to find that. Uh, so killer score. Um, so let's just kind of jump into everything else. So one of the members of the VC uh, advertised this as being available. It was still sealed. It was one that I was missing. They they had they wanted a pretty good price. I think they wanted like twenty dollars shipped, if I remember correctly. Um, and it's usually twenty three, twenty four bucks before tax out here. But um, so I jumped all over it, and, and then before I paid for it, I was actually just about to go to PayPal and pay for it. He's like, "Hey, I've got some other stuff that I haven't shown yet. 
uh, on the VC Buy Sell page, you want to take a look, and he showed a picture, and I bought four or five albums of those as well, all uh, New Wave of Heavy Metal, or, uh, sorry, um, New Wave of British Heavy Metal stuff, um, a couple of albums that I've been looking for for a long time, and it was really good deals. Um, I think all the stuff I bought from him, I paid like 32 or 33 bucks shipped, you know, and uh, just a killer score. So I'll get into those in a minute. Um, these next two were part of another uh, deal that I did on eBay, on eBay, on, uh, on uh, oh my gosh, on the YouTube buy and sell page, sorry, or the VC buy and sell page, uh, Wasp self-titled. I do have a copy of this, but my copy is pretty trash. Original inner. And this thing is, I mean, there's not a mark on it. Things thing's beautiful. I still need to clean it. So, very nice upgrade there. And then, uh, the single, I believe this was the German single. Music for Nations single of Animal. And this version is on the clear blue vinyl. So that's pretty stoked to get those. I got something else in that deal too. I don't remember what it was. Now going back to that last deal with the Black Sabbath, these are two of the albums I got. Uh, first up is Icon. Icon, I think John showed an Icon album, um, Captain SMF How or SMF Captain Howdy, uh, a couple weeks ago. And I'm very familiar with Icon being from Phoenix. Um, I, I first got turned on to Icon um, at Azia Records. Uh, they're, they're a Phoenix-based uh, band, and they went through a couple different styles. This is uh, more straight-up heavy metal, although they, they have kind of that glam rock look. Um, a very heavy metal sound. Um, and then their next album was more... I guess pop metal, AOR metal, you know, it's just a, a different sound. It's still a good album. It's not nearly as good. And uh, I, I don't think they ever reproduced the sound that they had on this first album. This album had some killer tracks, too. Uh, killer Machine is probably my favorite. Under My Gun is another great one. Uh, Rock, Rock On Through the Night. Just some really, uh, really killer tracks. And... Uh, I got turned on to them at uh, Zia Records in Phoenix, and if, if, if you're, you've been to Phoenix or Tucson or Vegas, Zia is really the spot to go to to find music, and, and a lot of my metal growth came from the guys at Zia in the, in the late 80s and early 90s. I would go in, and, and there were a couple guys that would kind of steer me towards some cool stuff to listen to, uh, and they really turned me on to some amazing music, and, including this. Which is kind of ironic because I later found out, and I, I don't, I, I, these guys probably didn't even know that, that in the early 80s, um, Zia put out a sampler that kind of gave Icon their start. Icon was on it. And Zia still does samplers. A lot of people don't realize that, that, that are familiar with Zia Records, that they go to Zia Records. Um, they also do put out music. It, it's not very often, um, but they've put out a couple of bands on the uh, Zia label. Uh, and then they do these compilations. And I think I just saw an ad recently that they're looking for acts for their newest compilation. Uh, but that's something that they've done since the early 80s, you know. Um, killer, killer album, though. I recommend everybody check that one out. Uh, another one that I was super stoked to see. Uh, because you just never see this album. And this band just doesn't get enough credit. More. Blood and Thunder. Uh, new Wave of British Heavy Metal Band. Uh, when you see lists of the top New Wave of British Heavy Metal Bands, this band is usually in the top 10 or top 15. Um, they've got a killer sound. The guitar is amazing. Um, this is their second and last album. Unfortunately, uh, uh, they just couldn't keep it together. They had a lot of problems with band members. Uh, if you look them up on uh, Wikipedia, uh, you'll probably see six different lineups. And they only did two albums, uh, you know. Um, very guitar-driven metal, though. Uh, elements of hard rock. This this one is a little more hard rock than their first album was, but still has that new wave of British heavy metal sound and just a killer, killer album. Uh, this is one that I got off of um, Discogs. Uh, I've mentioned a number of times I'm trying to fill out my Priest collection, um, and I ran across this for, for $12. Um... 
VG Plus all the way. Uh, and then I noticed in the note, and this I, I usually see in record stores for like 20 bucks in this condition, 20, 25 bucks. Um, and then I noticed in the notes it said possibly signed on the back. So I was like, well, I don't know what that means, but whatever. I thought maybe somebody put their name on the back. That's not the case. That's KK Downing's autograph. Um, I pulled, I looked on uh, the internet and pulled up about 30 different pictures. And I mean, that's, I'm no expert, but that looks just like KK's autograph. So that was a nice little bonus. I don't know why somebody would have their album signed on the back, though. I, I've never got that or, or get it signed on the inside. I've always, maybe it's because I like displaying signatures. I mean, I've got two of them up there now. I actually have six more albums framed over there that I need to put up that I just haven't got around to yet. But, uh... Um, definitely a, a, a must-have. Uh, any of the Priest Live is really good. Um, whether it's with Rob Halford or whether it, it was with Ripper, all of their live stuff is amazing. So, killer double album, double live. Uh, these next two, actually these next three, I also got with that uh, Black Sabbath. Um, first up is Y&T Mean Streak. This is probably my favorite Y&T album. Um, and I say that having only listened to, to four or five of their albums. I haven't listened to their whole discography, so um, I'm not sure, you know, a lot of bands that earlier stuff, especially the, the stuff from the 70s, uh, is really where it's at. And this is, both of these are 80s albums. Uh, and I know these guys were around in the mid-70s, so I'm going to have to do some, uh, as I find more of their earlier stuff, you know, I may change that. Uh, but uh, as of right now, this is my favorite Y&T and man, their, their artwork is always killer. And then I also picked up uh, In Rock We Trust. Next up, uh, probably my second favorite from this band, um, the new wave of British heavy metal powerhouse Saxon. Power and the Glory, just a killer, killer uh, so going back to that uh, discussion we had a while back, uh, myself and Scott and uh, one of uh, one of his fans, and I think it was Brazil, saying that this band was hard rock, man. All they got to do is listen to this album. This album is heavy metal as hell. Just saying. Uh, next up, Kick Self-Titled. Definitely my favorite from this band. I'm a big fan of Kicks. Um... Even though their sound changed a little bit over the years, actually, for, even from this album to the next one I'm about to show you, Cool Kids, I've just always been a fan of this band. Um, this one I got from a member of the VC for uh, pretty cheap. And then this one I picked up at, uh, I believe I picked this up at my local record store for five bucks. I'm about 90% sure. I've had this one for a, a couple of months and just haven't shown it. Uh, this is another one I was surprised to run across. Uh, the store I got this from doesn't usually have any heavy metal. Um, this is uh, To Hell With The Devil. Um, I do not like this album cover. I prefer the one with the angels. Um, I don't know why they switched to this. I'm sure there's some story behind it. But uh, this is actually the Canadian pressing, which uh, only came with this uh, album cover. So, And it is the gatefold, just like it was here in the U.S., Shows the band members in their Bumblebee outfits. I forgot how good this album was. I, I remember this being more of a pop metal album. And there are some elements. I mean, they, they kind of shifted their sound a little bit with this to go the more popular music route. But the song To Hell With The Devil, man, that album just rips. And there's some, some really good heavy, heavy uh, songs on this album. Um, Man, I can't get over what these guys look like then. Look like then compared to now. Just blows me away. Uh, so I mentioned this one before. Um, I had ordered this a, a while back. It took quite a while to get here, uh, and you'll see why. But uh, Defender, the Defenders of the Faith, Japanese pressing, mint condition. Um, so I was on eBay uh, maybe a month and a half ago, two months ago. And this was for $15.99. There was 15 minutes left. So I bid $15 or $16 and put a max bid of $20. And I got it for $20, $24, or $25 shipped. Um, 
this goes for twice that all day long. You know, I was blown away. And then also, again, working on the Priest collection. Um, I got this one. This one was very disappointing. I, 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 I think I paid $13 for this off of eBay. And then I got it in, and it's probably just barely VG condition. Um, so, I mean, I gave the, 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 the seller a bad review. I sent him an email saying, and showing pictures of the gouges. I mean, it's literally got look, what looks like gouges in the, in the vinyl. And, uh, I mean, he couldn't really argue with the, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but. Probably not. There they are. I don't know if you can see those right there. I mean, it plays okay. You know, there's noise all the way through it, but uh, it's still a player. But I, I, I told him I want uh, $13 back, which is basically what I paid for the album. I told him he could keep the money for shipping. And he was nice enough to send that back to me. So um, I was real happy for that. Um, next up... Nazareth Hair of the Dog. I picked this up in a dollar bin. I already have a copy of this, but my copy was uh, not nearly as nice as this one. Um, other than the fact that uh, somebody put their name on it. VG Plus all day long, so my other copy will probably show up in somebody's VTL, VCLT box. Um, so this was a cool deal. Um, in early December, maybe late November, somebody posted a link to Amazon. Amazon had uh, the new Opeth album uh, for 10 bucks for a couple weeks there. And it, it may have been longer than that. Uh, but it was on back order. So I wasn't going to pass up on 10 bucks. So I went ahead and ordered it. Um, it didn't come in for almost a month and a half. It just came in a couple of weeks ago. But uh, Opeth Pell Communion. And I did a review of this. Actually a really popular review. I think it got three or 4,000 hits. But uh, Unfortunately, as with a lot of the new albums, and my last album, Opeth album, was the same way, there's quite a bit of noise in the vinyl, uh, which is kind of disappointing because I really love Opeth. But man, if you haven't heard this, this is an amazing, amazing album. Um, straight up prog, uh, you know, the, all the elements of heavy metal are, are pretty much gone from their sound in this album. There is some heaviness in one or two of the songs, but just straight up. Uh, I guess Neo Prog, you could call it. Sounds amazing. Definitely worth picking it up. And that also had a copy of the CD in it, if I remember correctly, as well. And then this one was another cool find. Um, the same place I found... It, it doesn't matter. I don't remember which album it was. One, one of the other ones I found the same day. Um, make sure I got everything here. Yeah. Um, I found Garage Inc. So this was in the original original wrapper. It was opened at the top. And uh, it was priced for $29.99. And I thought it was the new cop or, or the, the new pressing, the black and pressing. Um, and I thought maybe they were selling it at a discount because the top was taken off but somebody had opened it. Um, so I checked all the records. Everything looked good. I, I just wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. Um, bought it. Took it home. They got home and I'm looking at it. It's not the black. It's the original pressing from 98 of Garage Inc. For $29.99. And they don't go for much more than that. They go for $35, $39. Uh, but still, I, I was pretty stoked to find this um, for under $30. Bucks. Again, this one I, I picked up uh, well before Christmas. and uh, But uh, that's pretty much it. I think that's everything. Um, I hope everybody has a good weekend. Uh, Take care of you. See, I'll do another update pretty soon. I've got, uh, um, as I mentioned a couple of times, I'm going through and, and sorting stuff out and cleaning uh, all my vinyl. Um, and I'll do a review of that cleaner, too. Um, so I was going to buy a Spin Clean, and one of my local record stores sells the Spin Clean and the Crossley version of the Spin Clean. Um, and there's about a $30 difference in price. So I said, screw it. And I went with the Crossley just to try it out. The guy at the record store said I could bring it back if I had any problems with it. And it's been working famously. So uh, I'll, I'll do a review of that probably in the next couple of weeks. But uh, 
Uh, I've got some more. Uh, I've got some really cool Goodwill finds um, from this last week uh, that I'll do a video on too. So keep an eye out for that in the next few days, maybe the next week. Um, so other than that, uh, take care, BC.